Hello everyone, myself Dr. Amit Maheshwari and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss one important and interesting case study on myocardial infarction and its relation with the various enzyme markers. This particular case study can be asked as a short note or it can be asked as a long answer question. Fine. So before going in the detail of this video, please like, share and subscribe Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit for more such interesting videos. So let's start. So first, what is the description part? Fine, so the, in the description, 54-year-old chronic smoker for past 30 years who is a banker by profession presents with the heaviness in the chest with the pain on left upper limb for past 12 hours. Fine, so over here, the patient is 54-year-old chronic smoker, fine, for the past 30 years and he is a banker by profession. And he comes with the complaint of heaviness in the chest with pain on left upper limb for past 12 hours. He is known diabetic and hypertensive, taking oral hypoglycemic and antihypertensive medication. On ECG, which was done in the ER, it showed significant ST segment elevation. So this is the picture of ECG, which was done in the ER and which showed the ST, ST segment elevation. Fine. And the laboratory investigation shows that troponin T was 134 nanogram per ml, troponin I was 240 nanogram per ml, CPKMB was 340 international unit per liter, RBS was 328 milligram per deciliter, and angiography revealed 95% block in proximal portion of left anterior descending artery. So this is the picture of angiography. As you can see, there is a block in proximal portion of left anterior descending artery. So this is the description part. Now let's see what are the questions. So the first question is what is the probable diagnosis and justify it. So from the complaints of the patient that there is a chest pain and then there is a heaviness and from the biochemical investigation we can say that patient is suffering from the myocardial infarct infarction fine there is an elevation in the troponin i there is elevation in troponin t there is also elevation in CP cpkmb there in the ecg there was a st segment elevation and in the angiography also there is a block fine so from all these findings we can say that the patient is having myocardial infarction so what is this myocardial infarction myocardial infarction is basically necrosis of cardiac myocyte that is because of lack of blood supply. Fine, MI is the condition when cardiac myocyte undergoes necrosis due to the lack of blood supply to those cells. So that is the answer of the first question. Now, second question is, what are the various enzymes and non-enzymatic markers for the assessment of MI which can be assessed to diagnose and monitor myocardial infarction? And what is the time of their appearance, peak and persistence in MI? So there are various enzymes which can be used for the diagnosis of MI. And these enzymes are, first one is a total CK, fine, that is creatine kinase. Then there is a CPKMB. Then there is a lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. And then there is a aspartate amino transferase. Now, among these four, CPKMB is the marker which is routinely used for the diagnosis of MI. The other three markers are not specific for uh, MI because CPK total is also elevated in other diseases like muscular dystrophy, then cerebrovascular accidents, then crush injury or if there is a fracture because it is mostly found in the muscles apart from heart. Now there is a one isoenzyme of this CPK total that is CPKMB. Fine, there are three isoenzymes of CK total. One there is a CKBB, uh, one there is a CKMM and then there is a CKMB. So among this three, CPKMB is found in a heart and which is routinely used for the diagnosis of MI. Fine. Then aspartate amino transferase is also elevated in MI but it is mainly elevated in liver diseases. So that's why it is not routinely used for the diagnosis of MI. And the lactate dehydrogenase, it is also elevated in hemolysis. Fine. Because the concentration of LDH is more inside the RBC as compared to the plasma. So the minor amount of hemolysis will result in a false positive. So that's why LDH is also not useful for the diagnosis of MI. Now, what are the non-enzymatic specific markers for the diagnosis of MI? So there are two markers that you have to remember. One is a troponin I and another is a troponin T. So these are the specific markers for the diagnosis of MI. Fine. So if the question is asked, what are the specific markers for the diagnosis of MI, then you have to write down that troponin I and troponin T are the specific marker of MI. 
Now the timing for the elevation of this markers. This is the diagram. Fine. Which show the elevation of CK peak level and its persistence. Then there is a troponin. Then there is a LDH. And then there is a AST. So the CK MB it starts uh, rising at the three to six hours and it remains elevated for 36 to 72 hours. Troponins start rising at 4 to 10 hours and remains elevated for 8 to 14 days. Remember troponin I will remain elevated for 7 days while troponin T will remain elevated for 14 days. Then LDH will begin to rise at 6 to 12 hours and it will remain elevated for 6 to 8 days. AST which is also known as the SGOT will start rising at 24 to 36 hours and it, it will remain elevated for 10 to 12 days. And myoglob, myoglobin which is the earliest marker to rise in a MI, it start rising at 1 to 4 hour. It will begin rising before CKMB and troponin. Fine and it will remain elevated for 24 hours. But it is not a good marker for the MI because it will also increase in a muscle diseases. Fine. So this thing you have to remember for the myoglobin. And in the LDH there are 5 isoenzymes of LDH. There are 5 isoenzymes. LDH1, LDH2, LDH3, LDH4 and LDH5. And among these 5 isoenzymes, the concentration of LDH2 is more in the blood in the normal population. But when there is a myocardial infarction, the concentration of LDH1 will be more as compared to the LDH2. And this reverse in the pattern is known as a flipped pattern. Again, this is a this is frequently asked as a multiple choice question as well as viva question. That what is flip pattern and which marker will show the flip pattern. So it will be shown by the LDH. Now another question is which troponin is better for the detection of MI? Troponin T or I and write down the normal ranges of troponin I and T. So among these two troponin I and T the more specific marker for the detection of MI is the troponin I because it is only found in the muscles. Fine. So it is a more specific indicator of heart damage and it remains elevated for four to seven days after an attack of MI. Fine. While troponin T apart from heart, it is also present in a some minor amount in the muscles. Though the structure of troponin T which is present in the heart is different from the structure of troponin T which is present in the muscle. But the specific marker for the detection of MI is the troponin I. Fine. Now what are the normal ranges? So the normal ranges of troponin T is less than 5 nanogram per ml and the normal range of troponin I is less than 0.04 nanogram per ml. You have to remember this normal ranges because in sometimes in the case studies normal ranges are not given. So if you are not aware about the normal ranges then you cannot do the diagnosis of that particular condition. And in addition to this two normal ranges of CPK MB is 5 to 25 international unit per liter. So that is about the normal ranges. Another question is what are the novel cardiac markers? And this particular question is also asked in a viva as well. So novel cardiac markers are first one is a ischemia modified albumin. Novel means new. So new cardiac markers are ischemia modified albumin. Second novel cardiac marker is adrenomedulin. Fine adrenomedulin is basically vasodilator peptide and the third one is a copeptin. Copeptin is basically synthesized in the paraventricular neurons of hypothalamus. So these are the three novel cardiac biomarkers. Again, I'm repeating. First one is the ischemia modified albumin. Second one is the adenomedulin and the third one is a copeptin. Now another question is name the enzymes which may be used for the treatment in such cases. So the enzymes which are used in the treatment of MI are streptokinase and urokinase. Fine. So these are the thrombolytic agents which are used in the treatment of MI. Streptokinase and urokinase. So again, you have to remember the name of these two enzymes. Streptokinase and urokinase which are used as a thrombolytic agents which will do the lysis of thrombus. So it is used in the treatment of MI. And the last question is, what are the risk factors for MI? So for the risk factors of MI, it is divided into two risk factors. Fine. One is a modifiable risk factors and another is a non-modifiable risk factors. So as you can see in the image, in the modifiable risk factors, first factor is a high BP, smoking, diabetes mellitus, physical inactivity, obesity and high blood cholesterol or dyslipidemia. Fine. So from this case, you can see the person was having uh, hypertension. He was also smoking for past 30 years. He was also having diabetes mellitus and he is also banker. So that is physical inactivity. Fine. So these are the modifiable risk factors. Now non-modifiable risk factor is age. Uh, MI is more common in the advanced age that is greater than 
50 years of age and gender it is more common in the male as compared to the females because estradiol plays uh, plays protective role in the females then genetic factors and race and ethnicity so these are the risk factors for the mi so that is all about myocardial infarction and enzyme markers associated with it please like share and subscribe biochemistry basics by dr amit and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get all the notifications from it thank you